All right, so another week into March and another video during Funguary where I was participating in this drawing challenge where I decided to take, um, I guess kind of like one of my favorite things to doodle, which are these kind of sheepy goat guys, like the icon that you see at the beginning of this video and most of my videos, and I wanted to try and make him more dynamic and more interesting and to draw these little sheepy dudes in many different ways, hopefully interacting with different different things and um, just looking a little bit different than normal. So if joining me while I continue this experimentation sounds like something you would enjoy, I'm Rory Fluent. Feel free to call me Rory if you're new around here. Hi, hello, how are you? I like to create dope art content and hopefully a chill atmosphere. And if you're not new around here, what is up my dudes? Let's get into this video. So one of the things that I was experimenting with, more so than just trying to draw a more interesting subject matter out of um, something that I love to draw in my free time, which are these little dudes, I was also uh, trying to choose like different colors, kind of similar to last week, but instead of just integrating one new color, I was kind of trying to uh, choose a couple, and yes, of course, that soft, um, like cool toned, pale yellow color is in this spread because I love that color. It's like Naples yellow and buff titanium-y and it's just one of my favorite colors so um i saw it as sort of like um it's not necessarily like it's an option but when the creator of funguary which i'll have um up here on the screen along with like the uh theme for this week which was uh, oh my god what was it oh it was demonic of course um so that'll be up on the screen here um the list of mushrooms that i'm drawing and the name of the creator and then also this kind of color palette that they kind of come up with in um I don't know, I guess it's probably just for their Instagram post, but I'm really enjoying pulling colors from it because it was like way too much work to try and make all of the mushrooms the exact colors that they actually are and to try and work that all in in one spread and you know, eventually I want to start integrating a lot more colors into my work instead of just kind of doing a monochromatic or kind of like, um, sometimes I have two colors, but there's really never more than like three going on and I'd love to start being able to be a little bit more um, experimental and more complex with the colors that I'm using and the way that I'm using them. That being said, we have this lovely red shade. It's like a reddish purple, kind of reminds me of like Indian brown, but I am using my handmade watercolor palette. So this is called like Celestial Violet from Jasper Stardust, the same creator that I always purchase from on Etsy. Poems About You is another fantastic creator on Etsy um, and you guys should check both of them out. Those two watercolor makers combined make up the vast majority of my watercolor palette. And here I'm using that soft sort of reddish purple color along with that pale yellow and a soft blue, which is I believe Sodalite Genuine from my professional palette from Daniel Smith. And I don't think that I necessarily would have paired these three colors together, but I love the way that they look. They are so cool. I feel like like the two like cooler toned colors, the yellow and the blue, and then this warm, grungy, violety brown shade just really um, complement each other in a way that I don't necessarily think I would have expected. Like, I understand a little bit about color theory and there being some contrast going on with the two cool colors and the one warm color. The warm color kind of stands out in an interesting way and ends up being sort of like a subtle background color that I use to uh, make the other two colors kind of pop. But um, I feel like in a way, actually, it's the one that stands out since it's two cool tones versus one warm tone. Um, but I just think the way that the colors ended up interacting with each other, like the cool blue and then um, the way that the long noodly guy's antlers or that soft red brown color, um, I just feel like I wouldn't have like looked at those in my palette and been like, ah, yes, they will complement each other and work well together. But I think that they really balance each other out. They give like a really grungy vibe, which is what I was going for with this demonic palette. Um, all of these mushrooms are like inedible or poisonous or just uh, one way or another scary shrooms that you don't want to touch or be around so I loved this theme it was kind of right up my alley and so I was really trying to push myself to just be a little strange a little different and I continue that um, in the next couple spots
spreads but here specifically I was working on okay I want um, one of these guys to be like front facing and I want to elongate their legs and make strange antlers and have them doing like strange things um, and you'll see I also draw like multiple of them interacting with each other on the other page of this spread and so I was really trying to push myself in all aspects to uh, just go a little further and be a little bit more dynamic in what I'm painting in my sketchbook spreads. Back to the color work though, there was just something really complimentary and soft about this palette. I feel like in a way it's like an off like red, white, and blue American palette kind of thing, but like not in a super obvious way. I don't think it like looks way too like I was trying to be red, white, and blue or something like that, but the like warmish grungy purpley color really works with this soft blue and they they both end up pulling like a very purpley shade which um they aren't necessarily in the pans but working together they really bounce off of each other to create some cool undertones um around each other and then if you have sort of like the purpley color in the yellow the bulbous yellow mushroom there in the top left I feel like they both look really warm and so that's also really interesting the way that the different colors this specifically this like violety brown shade are interacting with the two other colors i'm using i found the entire process of figuring out how these colors were going to look on the paper really fun and exciting and it didn't go horribly wrong which is really really nice on the page currently, we have um, bird's nest fungus, which is the fungus that the um, little sheepy guy with the long legs is based off of. And then I have these little like egg round shapes in his antlers to kind of mimic what this fungus does, which is literally like grow on trees and kind of like these clusters. And then inside of this sort of bowl shaped part of the fungus is like these round orbs that look a lot like bird eggs, hence the name like bird nest. And then we have uh, Satan's bullet or boli. I'm not totally sure how to pronounce the second part of the, the name, but um, I think it's just like a super deadly mushroom to touch if I remember correctly, just like not the kind of shroom you want to be around. And so I drew these like round bulbous shrooms in reference to them and then the uh, sheepy guy that I ended up drawing is like this large bulbous back and then he's facing us with these two little horns um, and he's sort of puffy and a little strange looking and I really enjoyed the process of creating him and bringing him to life with the color. I feel like um, on the spread I actually really used the color in a way to bring these guys to life and that was really exciting to watch and to see the process of not only while I was doing it but right now while I'm watching this video back. Oh, and then the last mushroom dude that I haven't uh, started painting yet is Silverleaf Fungus, which is a really beautiful, interesting looking shroom that like grows like this soft, like green gray color and it almost looks velvety to touch, but it, it grows in like these vines and it's just really interesting to look at. So I ended up making that guy very unruly and his fur is a very like different texture than what I would normally try to draw. And so specifically, specifically with that guy, while he might be like just kind of standing there or whatever and not in the most interesting pose, I was really trying to focus on his fur texture and the way that his fur was looking and trying to make it a little bit more unique and more um, based off of the fungus that I am basing him off of. It was honestly really rewarding and really exciting to see these doodles of mine coming to life as I was painting them and using my mixed media, my pastels and colored pencils and gouache to uh, just really kind of bring them to life and make them look the way that I wanted to. And then it was even more exciting to add the line work and see that the color was doing something on top of the line work to add dimension to them and add a more dynamic feeling, which I've been really trying to push and work on. So super, super exciting to be able to achieve this in this spread and I hope to continue to take what I've learned and continue to make these little sheepy guys more dynamic and interesting through my color work. I'm focusing on little details using different sized paint brushes when I'm using my watercolor. I'm really trying to focus on like being purposeful with the different textures that I'm adding and where I'm adding shadow. Kind of like the same stuff that I was talking about in the first uh, week that I did this challenge. Just trying to be really intentional with my color, my shadows, my lighting, and really trying to see if I can make that 
um, an exciting process for me because right now I'm always most excited by my line art but I really want to be able to feel confident in the color that I'm putting down like it's very purposeful and very intentional and I'm definitely still in the process of figuring out how the pastels are going to integrate into my traditional media. I use a lot of reference um, when I'm painting and drawing at the moment from things that I really enjoy that I uh, completed on my tablet. Uh, specifically, oh my god, specifically, because I don't necessarily feel like my traditional art looks like what I'm drawing in Procreate. And it's not that I think it absolutely has to be spot on, but I really love what I draw in Procreate and I'm trying to bring that to my traditional media and I think that this particular spread and this particular page um, and specifically like the Satan's bullet or however the hell you pronounce that um, the way this guy turns out I was just in love with him and I really really appreciated that my traditional media was like working in a way with me that I found just as exciting as procreate but I will say I still haven't quite managed to find something that totally mimics like the circular like pastel dots that I like to put on a lot of my uh, work in Procreate. There's just, I don't know, like you can't really get it with an actual pastel. And I don't, I, I like the grittiness of the pastel brush in Procreate and the fact that I can make those kind of like circular dots across um, anything that I'm drawing to like add texture and interest. And I kind of do it with like my Copic marker, but I'm trying to find some way of adding that texture in. I try to sponge with like gouache and I wasn't like in love with it. Like I liked it for a moment and then I, I don't know, I don't feel myself like gravitating towards using that um, for that kind of texture, but maybe I need to push myself too now that I'm thinking about it. These guys though, especially that uh, red guy in the middle of the page, definitely ends up being something that I feel like I would have drawn in Procreate. And while I still think that I'm capable of a little bit more in Procreate than I am traditionally, even though I've been doing traditional media longer, I feel like I just really kind of tuned into Procreate and figured out with the um, brush packs that I got from, what the hell are they called? max packs i believe is what they're called um with those brushes i was just able to use tools outside of what i have in traditional media in a way that traditional media doesn't necessarily a lot for and so like it's been really really cool to see what i can create and procreate because i feel like it opened up so many new avenues to me and i'm trying very hard to replicate that in my sketchbook because i do still like sketching traditionally there's something about a physical sketchbook that i'm not willing to give up yet <laughs> Flipping through a sketchbook and being able to see my growth and progress just isn't necessarily something that you can mimic in Procreate digitally. Like sure, you can create like a stack and that stack can have um, lots of little doodles and sketches on it, kind of like a sketchbook, but I don't know. It's just kind of not the same to me. I love opening up a new sketchbook, the feel of the first page, breaking it in and traditional media. I just don't think I could go without it in totality, but I definitely think that the work that I create and procreate tends to be a little bit better, a little bit more professional in my opinion. And I'm trying to get that same feel here in traditional art. And I feel like I've talked about this a lot, but to be completely honest, like it's true, I'm still kind of on that path and it's definitely like a long journey as far as I can tell. And I keep feeling like I'm getting closer and farther and closer and farther and I'm like, oh, I'm almost there and then not quite. And I'm definitely still trying to figure out how to get that feel from Procreate and translate it into my traditional art. Or at the very least, like appreciate my traditional art for being different than what I create in Procreate. And I'm just still not sure that it's still up to the level of quality that I create and procreate versus my traditional media where I'm just not sure that I would be able to make a final piece in it that I really love. And I mean, that's okay. You know, I have procreate and I can use procreate to create final pieces, which is what I've been doing for a while now and kind of is my plan to continue to do. So I guess what I really mean is that I want my doodles to look cute in my sketchbook. I want them to look like what they do in procreate. And so that's kind of like my goal, not necessarily to have to be able to complete finalized pieces traditionally, but more so to be able to make these doodles look like the way that I would want them to as if I was making them in Procreate. But I may end up having to kind of settle and tweak things because I do understand that there's a level of just being able to, I don't know, get like a lot of precision and a lot of, I guess, do-overs you could say in Procreate that you just don't have in traditional media. You know, you can sit and erase and erase and erase, but when it comes to actually like, um, 
the layers function, you know, in Procreate just allows for so many different options that traditional media never will. Being able to add and take away layers and, and experiment in that way to see how the addition and removal of something actually affects your piece is a huge deal. It's one of my favorite parts of being able to work digitally. And so in traditional media, it definitely requires a lot more understanding of the media that you're using and how to use it properly, especially if you're looking for a specific look or feel. video I'm painting the last two fungi on this page the silver leaf fungus and the destroying angels now the destroying angels were kind of funny because I took this guy and I kind of ran with the idea that it's an inedible mushroom and I kind of wanted him to look like he was trying to eat something and you know he's really not supposed to and so that's why he's kind of like on the ground like leaning towards this sort of mushroom looking thing because apparently these are just like totally inedible like don't even try to go near them don't eat them or ingest them it's a bad bad look and then for the silver leaf fungus i'm definitely trying to layer on like a ton of textures and a lot of like grittiness to try and get this feel of like a very wiry um goat guy you know i don't know if any of you would have played something like don't starve together there's this thing called like the ucus i think or something like that and um what you get from it is like steel wool basically that you can use to make like a brush in the game or whatever and i'm imagining that kind of really tough gritty texture um for the guy that i'm doodling up right now that fur texture though really doesn't come in until i start to fuck around with the ink liner and figure out exactly how i want to add in these little swirly details to the fur to bring to life that really crazy weird harsh texture that i've been going for as i've been layering colors on to the page and this guy was definitely out of my comfort zone. Like I felt very um, uncertain of myself because he wasn't just like fluffy and round. He was kind of pointed and jagged and it had strange lines that I was trying to figure out how to draw intentionally and not make too messy. And I definitely feel like I actually achieved that, which was like crazy exciting. Like I was so stoked that I was actually able to make him look the way that I wanted to because I'm sure anybody who is an artist knows that a lot of the time what you have in your brain 
name doesn't end up being put on the paper unless you're doing something like digital art where you can keep going at it for a long period of time. So yeah, it was just like really, really exciting that he looked wiry and spindly and like if you poked him, he wouldn't be the softest goat you'd ever poked, that's for sure. <laughs> Overall, I mean, this page ended up looking really sick and I was really happy with it. And then I move on to the next page and I like it too. So the whole spread ends up being super dope and something that I really enjoy looking back at. mushrooms on this last um, page in this spread are the bleeding tooth which is on the top and then you have lilac bullet or however the hell you pronounce that word um, on the bottom right and then beside it is like this fungus called like the dead man fingers fungus or something like that what is yeah it's literally dead man's fingers and it's so cool I ended up really really liking this drawing like I definitely felt like this spread I was able to get a lot of inspiration from it felt like subject matter and the kinds of mushrooms that I would really like to uh, draw and the names that I found a lot of inspiration in so it was very easy to start coming up with ideas. It's kind of hard in this spread to pick like a favorite little guy that I created because I am really really happy with every single one that's on the page which is just always really inspiring and really nice and rewarding to know and understand because that definitely isn't something that has always happened and in my last sketchbook I struggled so much so I'm just really enjoying Funguary at the moment because I feel like it's right up my alley. I chose subject matter that was really engaging to me and I get to push myself through this subject matter and I get to create it in a more interesting way and that's not always something that I I don't know that I want to do and so to have a reason to kind of push myself out of my comfort zone draw mushrooms that I wouldn't normally use color palettes I would normally and to draw these little goat guys in a bunch of different variants has been really really fun because I feel like I'm kind of testing my animal drawing skills in a way and it's really engaging and kind of making me think
So with this last look at the spread, that is my second week completed in Funguary um, under the, uh, what would you call it, I suppose topic of demonic mushrooms, and I had tons, tons, tons of fun doing this. I really, really like the way that it's turning out. I'm in the future, you know, currently doing this voiceover. I am through my third week and going into my fourth one, and I'm just really enjoying the whole process and getting a huge kick out of being able to take this challenge and sort of modify it to my liking so that it turns out um, that I'm drawing things that I want to but also that are also like out of my comfort zone I'm just having a lot of fun with that and I hope that anybody else who's participated in Funguary please let me know what your guys' experience was like and what you guys ended up doing because I'm just like super stoked, I guess. I know I keep saying that, but I am. I'm so stoked that this is turning out so well and these these are like videos that I'm really proud of and really happy to post on YouTube. And so if you've made it this long into the video, thank you so much for staying. If you would like to leave a comment, please do. If you don't know what to comment, just comment algorithm because it helps me out a lot. I know a lot of people say that and it's just basically the truth so whatever anyways thank you so much for staying until the end of the video and i'll talk to you in the next one bye